Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Elementor Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you how to easily pass form data like this to another page and have it display anywhere that you can place a shortcode. Let me give you a quick example. So here we are on this form. I just have my first name and my last name. What I wanted to do is pass this information onto a totally separate page and pull in these uh, variables. So as you can see, we have my first name here, my last name here. I show you how you can combine it. So if this is the type of functionality that you're looking for in Elementor Pro, continue with this tutorial. The good news is you can pull all of this off just using Elementor Pro and the free version of this plugin right here called Code Snippets. Uh, they do have a pro version, but in this tutorial, you can get by with doing this with just the free version. So what I recommend is you first download this plugin, install and activate it, and now we can jump right into the tutorial. The first thing we're gonna be doing is creating this page right here that has the form. And then what we need to do is create the page that it's gonna redirect to. And you can see right here, this is where we're pulling in the values from that first page. And then from there, we're gonna just add a few code snippets and that's all it's gonna to take to pull this off. So let's just jump into this very first page right here. As you can see, this is just a very simple contact form inside Elementor Pro. And what we need to do is first create the two fields. So in this case, uh, it's just gonna be first name and last name. So I just created two regular text fields right here. And this is gonna be the most important parts of the first and last name is you wanna give it a unique ID. So in this case, I'm just gonna call this one first name. And then same thing here, what I'm gonna do is instead of first name, we're gonna call it last name. It's a really good idea to keep this simple so you can reference it on the next page. So after you created the field that you wanna pass on to the new page, what we need to do is jump over into actions after submit and you can stack these things. So if you wanna have it you know, email you and do a redirect, you can do that. But in this case, uh, I just wanted it to redirect to a new page and just pass that information onto the new page. So what I did is I just selected redirect right here and now when you go underneath redirect, you're gonna see I have this string of text right here after the domain. So what I recommend now is you can click the update button, just get that uh, saved. And then what we need to do is create a new page right here. So as you can see, the page that we started out from, I'm just calling it pass form data. Um, in this example, I just wanna keep it really simple for the tutorial. And then the new page, I'm just gonna call it pass form data results. So the results page is of course gonna be the results of passing on uh, from that first page. So what you're gonna wanna do is create a new page right now. Um, you don't have to add this stuff to it yet, so just get that in there. And then what we need to do is copy the URL of the new page that it's gonna be redirected to. So as you can see, I just copied that. And that's what's right here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. That's the URL, and now what we need to do is all of this afterwards is gonna be the unique string that you need to pass on to the next page. And it's very simple, it might look confusing at first, but this is very simple, I'll walk you through it. So what you need to do is first put the question mark right here, and then just call first name equals this ID of first name. So in order to get all this information, you go back into your form fields and like I said in the beginning of the tutorial, it's really good to keep this ID simple. So like I said, the URL was first name equals and then the short code. So what you're gonna wanna do is first name and then equals whatever short code you have right here. And in this example, it's gonna be last name equals this short code right here. So let me go back into here and show you exactly how that's gonna look. I'm gonna highlight everything that we're talking about right now so you can see. So like I said, when you do question mark, first name equals that short code for the first name. And then anytime you wanna add another field to pass on, you need to put the and symbol right here. And then we just have last name equals that short code. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's actually one of the hardest things about this tutorial is making sure you get this to look just like this. So to recap, we're just gonna do question mark, first name equals the first name short code, the and symbol, last name equals that last short code. So now that you got that, what we can do is go on to this page now, and I'm gonna show you how you can add these things in here. And here we are on the back end of that page, and let me just show you how I have everything built out. So in this case, this is just using the regular text editor within inside Elementor. So I wanted to have the ability to inject these little short codes everywhere that I wanna have my first and last name. 
So let me expand this right here. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is just putting in some text. Uh, my first name is, and then this is what we're going to be covering in the next part of the tutorial. This is my first name, and I'm going to have a highlight my second name because you can see right here where it says snippet ID equals 47 and 48. Uh, you can see right here we have first name and last name. So the cool thing about this approach is you can add these little short codes to show your first and last name in this example anywhere on the page that you can do a short code. So this can be in headers and in this case we have it inside paragraphs. You can do it in buttons. You can do it pretty much anywhere. So once you get an idea of where you want to put your text, now we need to actually create these code snippets and then just drop them in here. So let's just jump into the code snippets back in and show you how I was able to create this. And here we are on the Code Snippets back end. Uh, this might look a little bit different because I'm using the uh, Code Snippets Pro, but you can always access the same functionality in the free version. So if you go underneath uh, Content, you're going to want to make sure you're on Content HTML. You're going to click new, Add New. So in this case, I already have this one created. So in this case, I'm just going to start with the first name. I'm just calling it PHP Git First Name. So as you can see, this is just one little string of code that we're going to be using inside PHP. And basically what it's going to be doing is echoing the short code for first name. It's going to try to get it. And then this right here is actually going to be a fallback. So if the user somehow gets onto this page right here, the results page, and was able to bypass that form, at least they can see that there's supposed to be something in here. So that's what they call a fallback. So I just have it where it's like first name and last name in a parentheses. So what you're going to want to do is just go in here and update this very first one right here where it says first name. And then this is the same thing right here. This is for my very first field, first name. And once you do that, all you need to do is just come down here and hit save. And then you're going to want to make sure we have this PHP code uh, selected right here. So your code snippet should look like this. It should say code snippet ID equals whatever ID is. And you want to make sure it says PHP equals true. And so if you go back into my code snippets, I have the same thing, but for my last name. So we have the same exact thing right here. We have get that short code, last name, last name, and then this is the fallback right here. And as you can see, this code snippet is ID equals 48, PHP equals true. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure it looks pretty much just like this. And now what we can do is copy these short codes and just paste them in right here. So this automatically is going to run that little PHP echo and give the result of the first name and number 48 was the last name. So that's it. Once you get those uh, short codes in there, you can then add this anywhere throughout your website. So it's not limited to just one type of format. You can style this up. So in this case, I wanted to show how it looked when it was bold. You can make it different colors if you add some... Um, CSS styling around it. So you, you could do it pretty much anything you want because it's just pulling in data at this point. So now let's just show you on the front end how this is gonna look. So now you can see if you go back into your form and let me just put in my first and last name. I'm gonna hit send. The most important thing you're gonna wanna look at is the URL up here. So you can see right here, this is that redirect that we added. So it's just my wiki demo testing. This is the results page. And then this right here is the string that we put in earlier. So it's question mark, first name equals Mark, and last name equals Crowell. So the ones where it's Mark and my last name Crowell, when you did that redirect, it was that short code. So what it's doing is it's rendering what is the value of that short code and just putting it into our URL string right here. That PHP echo is now just rendering that stuff out right here. So if you go up here and a user types in something else, like if I just did test after my last name, if I hit enter, you're gonna see now it says my last name with the word test afterwards. So that's why I think it's a good idea to have that fallback text. So in case a user does come to this page without that string in there, like I said, at least they're gonna know that there's supposed to be something here. So hopefully that helps you on how to pass form data over to another page using Elementor Pro. Make sure that you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.